Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. This Tuesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk, 888-589-8840 is the number to call. Let's grab a call from Johanna in Rockwall, Texas, to start this segment. Johanna, Rockwall, Texas, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian, thanks so much for promoting the voter guide. I just wanted to give a heads up on a law that exists in several states. I'm not sure how many but you are forbidden from bringing electronic devices, including your phone, into the polls. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. In all Texas, right. for sure. Colorado, I know for sure. I haven't researched all of that. I've been working personally as part of the voter guide team uh, to help put this together. Hmm. And I want people to not be uh, have an unpleasant surprise ah. when they walk in to vote. So, 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 is, so there, is a, there is a law in Texas and Colorado, you, for sure? For sure, yes. Okay. So check with your local voting entity or the secretary of state just to make sure all right and have a backup in your hip pocket just print it up off your computer sure yes now that's an interesting thing to me johanna because you know most people like i just carry my cell phone in my pocket so it is with me everywhere i go now so that, that's a question i have is, is the law against bringing one into a polling place or, or just using it uh, using it and that includes accessing things on the web Okay, so that law so, needs to change, but right so, now it's on the book. All right, so you cannot, so you you could take your cell phone into a polling station, but you just can't access any information on the web using it. Don't take it out of your pocket to make a call or to surf the web. I mean, you can get thrown out of the polls. All right, well, okay, well, I appreciate that. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna. I don't even know what the law is here, but last time I was there, I. Uh, had some local races. I just, I just didn't know much about these candidates. So I'm actually, I'm actually, I think I'm in the polling place. And I called my friend, Tea Party guy here in where I live, and I know that he's up to speed on all of this. So I just called him up and said, "Hey, help me out here. What can you tell me about these guys?" And I got the information I needed. So I probably busted some kind of law. We'll probably have the Secret Service here breaking into the studio <laughs> any minute. All right, Johanna. Listen, thank you for your help on the voter guide. Appreciate that very, very much, and thank you for the. Heads up. So, folks, be sure and check and make sure that you can use your, actually use your cell phone at the polling place. Again, it's afaaction.net, afaaction.net. We got a app for the iPhone, app for the Android, app for the iPad. Uh, also, that app is going to enable you, if we, when we get it finally tweaked, be able to watch our election night coverage right here on AFR. Let's go to Yeoman in Western, or is it, uh, did I say that right? It's Yeoman, Western Ye- Iowa. Okay, Yeoman in Western Iowa. Great. Well, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Thank you, Brian. The debate, it showed clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt last night that Romney and Obama are flip sides of the same coin. The Libya, they, the, the fact that Libya was not hardly talked about, they had a gentleman's agreement to not bring up the unpleasant facts of Libya. And, and the other thing about Romney, you, you remember, you remember uh, the, the comic strip Peanuts from years ago? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, you remember how Lucy, come fall, Lucy was always holding that football out there for Charlie Brown and always assured him that this time it was different. She would not pull that ball away when he come running to kick it. Okay? Lucy's the Republican National Committee. Charlie Brown is the voters, <clears throat> and and what the RNC is saying, oh, this time it's different. We have a <laughs> real candidate for you this time. Yeah. The same thing will happen. Think about Romney. He, he instituted gay rights in his state by, by decree. He was pro-choice. The, guy, the guy's not going to change, okay? It's, it's like that song that Leonard Cohen wrote a number of years back. Everybody knows the dice are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor get poor, and the rich get rich. Mm. Well, you know, and it's interesting, uh, Yeoman, that you'd bring that up, because, you know, one of the observations I made, and a lot of people observed this, how many times Mitt Romney said, I agree with President Obama on this, or I approve of what he did here, approve of what he did there. Like he went out of his way, <laughs> says many nice things about uh, President Obama as he could when, you know, the point of a debate is to sort of d- distinguish yourself from your your opponent. Give people that are watching some reason to vote for you instead of for the other guy. People aren't interested about where you agree. 
Uh, they want to know where you differ because those are the issues on which they are going to make a decision about who to vote for. Well, listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate your call, Yeoman. And, and I think a lot of people share your concerns about how much we're going to be able to count on Governor Romney when he gets into office. Let's grab clip number three, if we can, uh, Rob. And this is an example, I think, of where I believe Governor Romney is as misguided about Islam as George Bush was and as Barack Obama is. Now, I don't know that Barack Obama is misguided about Islam. I just think he's thrown his lot in with Islam. Now, he shows favoritism. I'm not saying he's a Muslim. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's thrown his lot in with Islam. Shows much more favoritism toward Islam than toward Christianity. George Bush, I think, is a decent guy. He's a good-hearted guy. Uh, he's just gullible. He is just completely naive about Islam, and I see that same naivete in Mitt Romney about Islam. Now, at least Mitt Romney last night used the word jihadist, that we're up against jihadis, we're up against jihadism. Uh, he didn't use some fancy phrase about those who have hijacked a great religion. He just said, look, jihadis are the ones we got to worry about. Now, that is an improvement. That's a step in the right direction. But when you listen to this clip that I'm going to play here, you indicate, you know, he is a long way from having a good, clear picture of the threat that we face from Islam. Let's listen. We're going to have to recognize that we have to do as the president's done. I, I congratulate him on, on taking out Osama bin Laden and going after the leadership in al-Qaeda. But we can't kill our way out of this mess. We're, we're going to have to put in place a very comprehensive and robust strategy to help the, the, the world of Islam and, and other parts of the world reject this radical, violent extremism. So Governor Romney says, look, we're not going to be able to kill our way out of this mess. You know what? He's wrong about that. In fact, that is the only way. That is the only way we're going to be able to get out of this mess with Islam and with what Islamists want to do to us. This is the only language that uh, devout fundamentalist Muslims understand. It's, that's the only language they understand. They had to get turned back in 732 at Tours, France, by Charles Martel, Charles the Hammer. They had to be turned back. This was in the middle of France, Poitiers, France. We had a, a bunch of uh, young people in France that actually occupied a mosque in Poitiers, France, over the weekend, protesting Islamic immigration and what it's doing to their country. A lot of people don't know this, but the, there is a, a greater... Muslim population in France than any other nation in Europe. They have 5 million Muslims that live in France, and they're citizens and all that. A lot of them come from places like Algeria, which were part of the French Empire, so they've got sort of automatically have French citizenship and all that. But they vote, and they were responsible for electing the socialist president that's taxing the wealthy in France at a rate of 75%. It was the Muslims that put him into office because they overwhelmingly voted for the socialist candidate, and their votes, the votes of the 5 million Muslims in France, they determined the outcome of that election. And that's something that people are sort of blind to. Look, if you continue to invite these people to come into your country who do not share Western values, they do not believe, embrace the values that you and I embrace. There is no freedom of religion in Islam. There is no freedom of thought in Islam. There is no freedom of speech in Islam. There is no freedom of religion in Islam. Women are second-class citizens under Islam. There is no freedom of association under Islam. Uh, and you bring people into your country that reject your values and you give them the right to vote, they are going to use that to vote against American values. That's why I say that Islam is fundamentally anti-American. It is fundamentally un-American. There's no compatibility between the values of Islam and the values of the West. Now, again, we had to turn back the Muslim armies in France, Poitiers, France, 732. And these groups that occupied this mosque uh, over the weekend, they went back to 732. We're coming up on the anniversary, October 25, two days from now, was the anniversary of when Charles the Hammer Martel turned the Muslim hordes back from Tours, France, or Poitiers, France, in 732 A.D. I mean, you know, Islam starts about 100 years before that. Islam starts in about 630 A.D., and 100 years later, they're trying to conquer France at the point of a sword and cutting the heads off anybody who gets in their way. That's Islam. That's what it is. That is the problem. 
And we had to turn them back at Vienna, 1683. They had to be turned back by Ferdinand and Isabella, 1453. I mean, that's why Columbus had to sail for to the west because the Muslims were blocking all the land routes to China. So we had to find some way to get there by ocean, and that's what Columbus was off looking for, India and China going the sea route because the Muslims were blocking all the land routes and the caravans and all the business just kind of dried up. They had to find another alternate route. So here's the problem I have with Governor, Governor Romney. He's just naive. He is gullible. He has been deceived when it comes to Islam, un- unless he knows better and is just saying this for political purposes. But you, you look at the shorter Mitt Romney and his approach to foreign policy is to help Muslim nations reject Islam. That's his foreign policy strategy. We've got to find a way to help Muslim nations reject Islam. It's not going to happen. That's what he said. Um, we must have a comprehensive strategy to help reject, that is to help Muslim nations reject this kind of extremism. Well, to them, it's not extremism. To Muslim nations, this is not extremism. This is simply Islam. This is pure, undefiled, unadulterated Islam. This is what the prophet taught. This is what Allah taught. This is what the holy book of Islam teaches. Nothing extremist about it as far as they are concerned. And to think that we are going to be able to persuade through some kind of committee or some kind of human rights campaign, persuade these Muslim nations to reject Islam, it's folly. And it's foolish to base a foreign policy on the premise that somehow that goal can be accomplished. We'll be right back after news, Focal Point, AFR Talk. Stay with us. American Family Radio.